This should be a great matchup, and we'll get you set for the opening kickoff in just a moment, but a reminder that the Ontario Cup is Ontario Soccer's Outdoor Provincial Championship and is the largest competition of its kind in Canada. As one of the oldest and most prestigious amateur sporting events in the country, the Ontario Cup was first staged in 1901 and has operated continuously since, with the exception of the World War II period and during the global pandemic in 2020. However, the Ontario Cup has staged a triumphant comeback in 2021 as the 105th edition of this Soccer for Life competition has played out safely across the province with thousands of participants. After an amazing summer of competition, the Ontario Cup Finals are now set. What began with nearly 300 teams has been whittled down to, well, now at this point, the last six teams with those six remaining teams vying for Ontario Cup glory as we had 28 teams appearing in 14 finals matches over the first two weekends of September. Typically, some of the Ontario Cup champions in certain age categories get to fly their provincial flag at the national championships. However, in July 2021, after careful deliberation and review of membership feedback, Canada Soccer decided to cancel the national competition due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Participant health and safety were the main consideration in this difficult decision. All right, folks, let's get you set now for the opening kickoff here as it's going to be Mississauga Dixie Black defending the goal to our broadcast right, wearing a black and blue combo kit, black shorts, blue socks, and they'll be taking on their Mississauga rivals, Stella Rosa FC, who are wearing a red and white striped kit, white shorts, white socks, and they'll be going from left to right across your monitor and it'll be Stella Rosa FC to kick us off here today. Mississauga Dixie playing a very interesting formation, a 3-3-4. Three, three, we'll see if that changes. But putting four players up front, Stella Rosa FC countering with a Looks like it's going to be more of a 3-4-2-1, but we'll keep an eye as we're underway here in the final match of the day as we kick off with the sun setting directly in front of us, and we'll see if that plays a factor early here in this boys' under-16 district final as you're tuned in to the 2021 Ontario Cup Finals. We're coming to you live from the Ontario Soccer Centre Stadium field as the ball tossed in by Branca. Kicked away by Laville as it's controlled now by Janaki. He plays that one over to his defensive partner in Ruiz. Stella Rosa FC slowing it as the captain Janaki plays to the near touch line. Bidakovic goes right back to the cap as Bokin plays it to Janaki. Starting keeper for Stella Rosa FC. Looks like that's Aaron Joseph in goal. And for Mississauga Dixie Black, it'll be Jersey Scolises. Lawn car takes possession here for Stella Rosa as they start to work up outside of their defensive third. He plays that one out wide to Ruiz. Not forcing anything, patient. Ginocchi plays to the near touch on Vitakovic, collected by Branca. Nice control here by Maffei as he plays back for Ginocchi. Skosilas, the keeper for Mississauga Dixie, as he controls the back line, giving them instructions as Stellarosa start to work the ball up around half. And with Hub International Insurance Brokers, we have a partner today to support us as we prepare for tomorrow and who will help protect what matters most when we get there. There's a foul and a free kick to come here for Stella Rosa FC. Because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift and Hub wants us to be ready for it. Find out more at hubinternational.com. So the captain, Daniel Ginocchi, will step up to take the free kick. Right now, a three-man wall defending for... Mississauga Dixie, Ginocchi asks for 
accounted out 10 yards, so the referee will oblige, and we prepare to take the free kick, and he'll earn a couple steps more distance from that wall. And now Janoki with a mind for a strike on that. He takes the shot, and he scores! Oh, what a goal! Set piece perfection! Daniel Janoki in the third minute. How about that? A free kick from nearly 30 yards out and he places it perfectly past the diving Skosilis and it's Stella Rosa she who have a one nil lead here very early in this match. What a tremendous free kick by Daniel Janoki. So we'll see how Mississauga Dixie respond after Stella Rosa get the opening goal here in the U16 Boys District 2021 Ontario Cup Final on a perfect free kick taken by the Stella Rosa FC captain, Daniel Janocki. And we'll have a quick look at how these two teams got to the finals as Mississauga Dixie opened up their road to the Ontario Cup Final with a 7-3 win over Brampton SC. They then picked up a 3-1 win in the semis over St. Catharines Roma. For Stella Rosa, they started with a 4-0 win over St. Catharines. St. Catharines getting back in by way of the playing round, but Stella Rosa advancing to the semifinals where they picked up a 3-2 win over Vaughn SC. And so far here in the opening minutes of the Boys under 16 district final at the 2021 Ontario Cup Finals. It's Stella Rosa FC with a 1-0 lead as the captain, Janocki, plays it between himself and the keeper. And now Janocki advances the ball ahead for Mafai. He plays it back. Janocki quick touch forward and working with it now is Loncar. Nice work by Loncar as he switches out to the far wing. Bakian lets it go and it's quickly played back to Ruiz. Again, Stella Rosa showing patience in their possession, not trying to force anything, trying to bait Dixie into making a mistake. Similar to the way they committed the foul, which led to the free kick and the subsequent goal from that man right there, the captain, Daniel Janocki, as he plays the ball forward. Lawn car. Stella Rosa FC again, just controlling possession. Lawn car, near flank. Tries to play the ball ahead, but that one off point intended for Brenka, and it goes out for a Dixie throw-in. Labile, he tries to play the ball through the midfield, but quickly Stella Rosa get possession back, and they look to work their way up the pitch. A good... Ball intended for the striker up front in Ethan Butler, but coming off his line to collect was Jersey Skosilis as he bowls it out, and now it'll be controlled by the Dixie captain, Chessman. He plays a 1-2, but he can't hold possession, and it's out for a throw. Quickly taken by Branca, controlled now by Lonkar. Janoki. Vidakovic. Back to Janoki. Ruiz, good ball up the middle of the pitch as they start to advance, carried ahead by Bochin. He turns it over and just as quickly, Dixie give possession away on the pass from Brown. Control now by Brank after receiving the pass from Longcar. He goes back to Vitakovic, evades the challenge there from Da Silva Botello and it's Ruiz who plays it out to the far touchline. Good ball ahead is running for it is Maffei, but that's actually, that's gonna be out of his range as the keeper Skasilis plays out. William Chessman, good touch over for Labile. He's got room to carry it. He tries to make the pass ahead. That's picked off, nearly gets it back, but good step over by Longcar as he holds possession for Stella Rosa. Branca 
into the middle, controlled here as Butler lays it off for Longcar. His ball cleared away by Laurenti Manrique, and that'll go out for a Stella Rosa throw. Temperature is cooling as the sun goes down. A little bit of a breeze, but not anything too significant. Again, pretty much optimal conditions all day long here at the Ontario Soccer Centre Stadium field in Vaughan, just north of the city of Toronto as the sun's setting directly in our sight lines, but good vision there from Stella Rosa to play the ball through. Unfortunately, it went off the back of Branca, and now it's knocked out for a Dixie throw. Chessman, he tosses in, flicked on by Labile, but he can't hold possession. And Ginocchi plays ahead for Branca. Steps out of traffic and feeds the ball into the middle. Tries to get the return, but that one headed away by Chessman. Good aerial challenge there by Vidakovic as he wins the ball, but Dixie come away with it now, led by De Silva Batello. His pass picked off, but a foul committed on the challenge by Bokian, and it'll be a free kick here for Mississauga Dixie. Xavier Laurenti Manrique over top the ball for the free kick. Dixie putting six jerseys in and around the penalty area as a Ball from the free kick, never really a serviceable option, and sailing out for the goal kick. So, 10th minute of action here in the boys' under-16 district final of the 2021 Ontario Cup. And it's Stella Rosa with the 1-0 lead over their Peel Region rivals in Mississauga Dixie. Bokian gives it, check that, it was Butler who gave it away. Dixie trying to work something of the possession now. Chessman, he plays a left-footed ball intended on a switch, but Ruiz able to head that. Diaku controls now for Dixie. Diaku laying it off for Brown. Brown trying to take the man on, but he has to retreat, and he plays the ball back for Laurenti Manrique, who is closed down by Butler, and then the ball played away by Ginocchi. Dixie trying to come up with possession as Alejandro Mong got a foot to it. And now it's controlled by Laurenti Manrique. He sends a ball up the pitch, and that'll give a chance for Labile to run onto it with his right foot. He tries a strike, but well blocked by the Stella Rosa FC captain Ginocchi. And now the Dixie captain, Chessman, plays the ball forward. Controlled now by Stella Rosa as Mafai goes back to the captain. Ginocchi plays over to Ruiz, back to Ginocchi. Vitakovic, with a man closing him, makes the pass over to Loncar. Returns it as Stella Rosa just very textbook in their defensive possession and their patience to work the ball around. Again, baiting Dixie into making mistakes. And we'll see if Stella Rosa can take advantage of some space here. Ball played to the near flank. Lon Carr holds. He tells his man Bronca to go for a run. He ends up pulling it back now for Butler. A challenge on the back of Butler, but he fights through it, lays it off. But Mafai ran into a blue and black wall and ended up losing possession. He quickly got it back, but well read by Chessman. He strips it away, and that goes out for a Dixie throw. So a nice read by Chessman to step up on the anticipation, and now he's earned the throw in for his team, and he quickly tosses in as it's controlled by Comiso. His ball forward will be controlled by the keeper. I believe it's actually Obratov, yes, for Stella Rosa FC. It's Luka Obratov who's getting the start in goal. And there he has a strong drop kick, see the ball across half. Battle for possession from the aerial challenge. And 
It ricochets ahead for Butler, and he's got room to run with it. Tracked down by Camiso. The ball turned away, and now Ginocchi takes possession for Stellarosa. And he goes back to his keeper, Obratov. Obratov plays out for Vitakovic. Into the middle, Lonkar with a man on his back, lays off for Ginocchi, who in turn out for Ruiz. Stella Rosa playing a ball ahead for Lonkar, but he mistimes that challenge and commits the foul. He goes over to show good sportsmanship, knowing that he was going to get whistled for that, and now we'll get a Dixie free kick. So we'll see if Dixie can capitalize and equalize in this game as they trail 1-0. Free kick opportunity headed away by Ginocchi. Back into the box by Camiso. Onside was De Silva Batello, but he couldn't make his way through the maze of defenders. And right now they're playing a bit of volleyball as that volley gets headed away and a free kick whistled for Stella Rosa. So some nice work defensively by Ruiz and company for the team in red and white stripes. As Stella Rosa FC lead this match one to nothing. Ruiz plays over to Ginocchi. Vitakovic. Closed down by Labile as it's now held by Branca. His through ball sees past the defender. Budic running onto it, but the keeper, Skasilis, comes well out of his area to make that clearance. And it was actually Branca closing down on that opportunity. No, it was Budic, excuse me, 49 on the far flank. And. Well, good job by the Dixie keeper to come out for the clearance. And now they'll try to reward his effort in the attacking half of the pitch. But quickly, they're forced back inside their own half. Dixie trying to work from the back line now with Laurenti Menrique. A man on his back, and all he can do is play it out for a Stella Rosa throw-in. Stella Rosa getting ready to make a substitution as it looks like Kush Patel will come off the bench but not before a free kick here for Stella Rosa as Matthias Maffei won that free kick. Rocco Litrenta gets the warning from the referee for that challenge as it's played short from the free kick. Vidakovic, he turns it over. Dixie trying to counter as the Silva Batello turns, but his pass picked off. Ruiz, Loncar, Maffei, room to run. He plays a long ball to the far flank, but no one there. And it'll be controlled by Xavier Laurenti Menrique for Dixie. His long ball then controlled initially by Stavrosa, but now his own team picks it up and it's controlled here by Litrenta. He plays it back for the captain, Chessman. Good ball ahead for Rocco Litrenta. He's got room to maneuver as he lays it off for Comiso. Good challenge by Maffei as he comes away with the ball. And stepping up is Laurenti Manrique. Flicked on by Litrenta, but easily handled by the keeper. As Obertov picks it up and bowls it out. Maffei. Challenge for the ball is... Labile got there for Dixie, but it's controlled by Stella Rosa. And then at the half, as Dixie wrestled the ball back, Loncar whistled for the foul on Comiso. As we hit the 18th minute of action here, Dixie working up the far flank. As Diaku, he tried to play a ball in. De Silva Batello in the vicinity, but the danger cleared by Stella Rosa. Quickly hammered back in, headed, and that'll go back to Obratov, who corrals it with his feet and shows no urgency to pick the ball up until he's challenged. 
So Luka Obertov gets set to kick this one out. And with a strong right foot, he clears it across half and it's collected by Butler. Lays it off for Loncar. Tracking back defensively, Lee Trenta makes a play for Dixie, but then his pass too far out of the range of Diaku, and it's out for a Stella Rosa throw. And now we'll get the substitution here for Stella Rosa FC. As Patel gets set to make his debut in this match. And we'll take this opportunity to remind you that Toronto FC is the official founding premier partner of Ontario Soccer, as well as the presenting partner for the Ontario Player Development League, the province's Youth High Performance League. Their commitment to the game in Ontario is unrivaled. Visit torontofc.com for tickets and more. Patel comes into the match. Budic out for the time being. From the throw-in, Ruiz. The sun's setting, the temperature is dipping here. I'm certainly going to have to grab a jacket at the halftime break. As that ball played ahead into the attacking third, Stella Rosa running onto it, but it'll travel out for a Dixie throw-in. And Dixie will counter with a change. So the first substitution for Dixie in this match, we'll see Evan Uribic come into the match. As Uribic gets set to enter in and he will take the place of Alejandro Mon. Flicked on, Stella Rosa holding possession, Lon Carr in control. Ginocchi, Vidakovic. Ginocchi, Ruiz, Loncar, Ruiz, just a very methodical approach here by Stellarosa FC, you get the feeling that they could just do this all day long, passing the ball around in their defensive zone and then waiting for opportunities like this to present themselves, but that time tracking over defensively. Dixie making the play, but it's out for a Stella Rosa F3 and then uh, throw in as James Gaw making the defensive play for Dixie. Dixie Gang set to bring a couple more players into this match, including Tarek Aboati Fauz, as Fauzi, one of two players here for Dixie, getting set to come in. But again, another Celerosa FC throw as the crowd cheers them on. Butler receiving the ball. Tries to dribble around Gaw, but nothing doing. Controlled now by Laurenti Manrique. He evades the first challenge from Butler. Clears a long ball across half where Janocki meets it. He's got to hustle forward. He loses his balance, tumbles over, and Dixie unable to corral possession away. Despite Janocki losing possession himself. Now Stella Rosa track it back to the right back Vitakovic who plays forward. Patel, his first couple touches on the ball and just like the rest of the team, short quick passes, not trying to commit any costly turnovers. Long car. Janocki. Vitakovic. Branca, nice touch into the middle for Maffei. He plays the ball ahead and running onto it is Patel. Patel working in the corner against Chessman and that's out for a goal kick. Patel thought he'd won a corner but nothing doing there and it'll be a goal kick and a chance for Dixie to make a couple more changes. So Abo Atia Fauzi comes into the match along with Jimmy Hayun. So we'll see if these two players can make an impact for Dixie. As the coaches for Dixie, Richard Labile, Leonardo Campanella, and Angela Malvaso. And for Stella Rosa FC, Veliko Lukovic, Nikola Paunik, 
David Vukovic and Jal Meta as Salarosa FC carrying the ball ahead. Kush Patel with two defenders on his back tries to dribble out of traffic, makes the pass to Branca. He plays it towards the top of the area, but that's headed away. Long car with the volley and eyes for net, but a foot for, well, something pretty far away from the net as that traveled out for the goal kick. Bit of a miss hit, really went more off his shin than his foot. But he had the confidence to take the shot and give him credit for that. Sko Silas plays the goal kick short. Ga takes possession for Mississauga Dixie. 1 2 gets intercepted, and now Maffei tries to work it in. Butler nearly came up with possession. Branca plays ahead. Butler crashing into Lorenti Menrique. Branca gets it back. There's a weak shot, and that'll be easily handled by Skosilas as the attempt coming off the foot of Mateos Maffei. Chessman controlling for Dixie, playing to the near line, but it's out, and it'll be a throw in for Stella Rosa as we're here in the 24th minute. We're playing two 45-minute halves here in the boys under 16 district final of the 2021 Ontario Cup. Right now it's Stella Rosa FC with a 1-0 lead over Mississauga Dixie. The keeper, Obertov, plays a right-footed ball up the pitch, but it travels out for a Dixie throw-in. So the throw-in taken and Dixie hold possession, a ball played towards the penalty area, but Stella Rosa able to initially clear it. Dixie quickly get it back. Chessman running up to take possession after the pass from Lee Trenta. Chessman, he crosses in. Obratov, a little bit of hesitation, coming off his line, loose ball, and then the referee whistles it down as the keeper Obratov got mixed up in the collision there with the Dixie forward. And Stella Rosa get the benefit of the referee's whistle. And that puts an end to that threatening sequence for the team in black and blue. But some good energy shown there by Mississauga Dixie as that was one of their more promising opportunities in this first half of action. All coming from that great cross from the captain, William Chessman. Throwing over the head of Branca, Chessman plays it for Litrenta. He's got room to dribble, cuts back into the middle, plays a right-footed cross to the far flank, and it was out of the range of Ribic, and it's out for a goal kick. Well, when we started this match... I noticed that Ethan Butler was wearing gloves. He's the only player on the pitch to be wearing gloves. He might be the smartest guy out here because it is starting to get chilly. Nods of approval from our technical crew who are all bundled up. The way these guys look, you'd think it's January. But again, I'm probably the fool considering I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. Obratov, he's got some issues with his laces and his teammate Janaki helping him out as he ties up the keeper's laces. The referee trying to urge them on, but not much they can do there except wait the few seconds. And now Obratov gets set to play it out from the goal kick. Dixie trying to close down, but it's controlled by Branca. Into the middle for Maffei. Maffei tries to turn up the pitch, but Litrenta closes him. And now Dixie starting to give Stella Rosa, less time and space in their own half of the pitch to set up, and that's starting to lead to some nervous touches and possession from the team in red and white. We'll see if Mississauga Dixie Black can capitalize on that, but for now, Lon Carr carries the ball ahead and makes a good pass to Branca. He feeds one up for Kush Patel, running onto the ball. Patel, good first touch, second attempt on the cross. It's knocked out for a corner kick. Defended nicely, once again coming over for the stop was James Gaw. 
Goff setting a really nice defensive tone alongside Chessman on that back line for Dixie. Milan Loncar gets set to take the corner kick here for Stella Rosa as he'll set up for the outswinger. Right footed cross. Ball dipping to the near post and cleared away by Gaw. Chessman trying to follow up on that clearance. 50 50 shoulder battle, and it's Dixie that come away with the ball. Lee Trenta plays ahead for De Silva Botello. He works the near sideline and ends up giving up the throw in. Puts a bit of a shot into the back of Vitakovic and then tries to get under his skin by tossing the ball at him. Vitakovic coolly and calmly plays the throw in. in. As nice job by Branca to play that over to Butler. Controls with his shoulder and now with his feet. Bokin, Ruiz, Maffei, back to Ruiz. As we've got a little more than 15 minutes remaining here in the first half of action. Loncar. Stella Rosa fans in attendance chanting on and encouraging their crowd, uh, squad as the squad moving the ball on the pitch here with Branca. Dribbling around a couple of defenders. Nice job to cut back into the middle of the pitch. Plays it off to Butler, but then his layoff picked off by Brown. Tayshawn Brown, he plays a good ball ahead for Evan Ribic. Working the far flank, Ribic gets shouldered from behind and that'll be a free kick for Mississauga Dixie. Thirtieth minute of play. Free kick coming up here for Dixie. An opportunity to play across into the penalty area and get a flick or a volley or possession off the end of it. Here's service from the free kick, but well, it looked like Dixie weren't ready for that, and as a result, Stella Rosa cleared out to half. But quickly, Laurenti Manrique, he tries to needle one through. Now controlled by Diaki. His right-footed ball into the area right on goal and an easy save that time for Obratov. Ethan Diaku took the free kick and he also took that shot from distance. As Jimmy Hewn brings the ball down for Dixie. Controlled now as Abo Atia Fauzi Playing it over to Hewn. Ga, Chessman. Abo Atia Fauzi. Let Lee Trenta now with it. He's got an option there. Plays the ball into the area. Is working the top of the box with De Silva Batello. But good defensive discipline by Stella Rosa, and it's knocked out for a throw in. Chessman gets set to take the throw. Lee Trenta running onto it. Long car defensively there, and it's knocked out by Vitakovic for another Dixie throw in. Chance of Let's Go Stella rising from across the field as they set to defend this throw in. Deep in their defensive third. Headed away by Vidakovic. Branca ends up giving it away on the clearance attempt as Brown had it. Controlled by Chessman and now ahead for Abo Atia Fauzi before it went out of touch for another Dixie throw. So once again, Chessman gets set to take the throw. Not too much movement off the ball yet. A close option in Hewn. Opts to play ahead for Abo Atia Fauzi, but Stella Rosa get to it first, and now rushing onto it was Butler, but he's unable to win that challenge against Ga. Laurenti Manrique quickly played by Brown over to the far line. We're carrying it ahead here for Dixie. A nice run presented by Diaku, and then the cross 
on the back of the net and out for a goal kick, but some nice build up and quick turn of pace there from Dixie as they look to threaten. Stella Rosa gets set to make a substitution as Matthew Welka will come into this match here in the 33rd minute of action. Welka replacing Bokian. The goal kick taken short. Lawn Carr holds possession. Take this opportunity to remind you that Ontario soccer values fair play and we share this common passion with our partners from Respect in Sport, the leading e-learning platform for the prevention of bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination. Learn more about their programs and start your Respect education journey today at respectgroupinc.com. Here go Dixie as they try to work the far flank. Ethan Diaku ends up losing possession, but Jimmy Hewn there to wrestle it back. Tayshawn Brown lays it back for Laurenti Manrique. His long ball picked off, but quickly collected now by De Silva Batello. Chessman, room to run. He tries to pick out Litrento with the pass, but that one off the mark, and it's knocked out for a Dixie throw just inside the attacking half. Stella Rosa FC leading 1-0. They scored early in the match. Off a free kick set piece taken by the captain, Daniel Ginocchi. And now here goes Kush Patel up the near flank, trying to double up. Patel burning past defenders. He pulls back. Well-timed tackle by Chessman. Excellent footwork there as well by Gaw. Very impressed with the defensive duel there for Dixie. Chessman wins the throw, but he'll have to wait to take it as Dixie want to make a substitution. Fourth official says you're going to have to wait till the next opportunity. So they take the throw, and Chessman plays it in. And now we've got a Dixie player down from that challenge as slow to get up is Tarek Abel Atia Fauzi. Takes a bit of a knock, but he's able to battle through it and it'll be a free kick for Dixie as Chessman stands over top the ball. Breeze picking up as it's blowing towards the Stella Rosa goal as Lee Trenta gets clipped after receiving the free kick and it'll be a subsequent free kick here for Dixie. So this set piece will be just in front of the Stella Rosa bench as Tarek Aboatia Fauzi, who took the knock on the previous foul, unable to shake it off and he'll need a substitution. And for the time being, Aboatia Fauzi comes out of this match and he'll be replaced by Alejandro Mom. So here comes the three uh, free kick for Dixie as Chessman over top the ball and with the Stella Rosa player Branca obviously close. He'll get the distance and wait for the referee's whistle to restart the action. Not many Dixie players. Well, now they start to get six in there as Chessman plays the ball through, but a trio of Stella Rosa defenders were there to make easy work on the clearance. Now it's controlled by Diaku. Looking for an option, steps over, plays it out wide. Chessman creeping in along the far flank. They can't quite feed him the ball as Ribic tried to take his man on. Lost possession in the process, and now Stellarosa build out the near side as Branca plays ahead for Patel. Kush Patel, room to run. We've seen his speed be a factor as Patel continues to work up the flank. Closed down there by a duo of Dixie defenders, and... Knocked out for a corner kick as James Gaw got there defensively. Corner kick to come here for Stella Rosa. 38th minute of action. Lonkar on top of the ball for the corner kick.
Right footed cross in. Knocked away, Litrenta can't get the second clearance, but a third effort from Dixie knocks it towards the half where Ruiz comes up with it. Nice job by Ruiz to battle through. He continues forward. A man on a mission there, but finally Dixie able to put an end to that threat from the left back, Jose Ruiz from Stella Rosa FC. And now Dixie trying to mount something menacing of their own. The one, two intended for Diaco to receive back, but knocked out of play and it'll be a Dixie throw it. And Dixie will try to make a change here. Referee unable to hear the fourth official. This is one thing I don't understand. I don't understand why the AR1 doesn't put up his flag for the substitution. They do it now after the referee becomes aware, but help the guy in the middle out. Be a team and communicate instead of having the fourth try yell over the crowd. Anyways, Sanin coming into the match for Dixie as they are able to get the substitution. However, they can't capitalize and it's out for a Stella Rosa throw. Stella Rosa definitely dictating the pace of play, just slowing things down when they want. Again, I mentioned it earlier, it feels like they could just pass the ball around all day defending this one goal lead. Loncar receiving the pass from Ginocchi. Loncar stepping around the challenge from Lutrenta. Loncar cuts back into the middle, makes the pass to Maffei. He thought of a long range attempt at target and delivered the strike, but never threatened the keeper, Skosilas, as he plays it out short. Ga, Chessman. Quick touch ahead for Litrenta. That time he loses possession to Branca. Maffei, his pass picked off as James Gaw plays a long ball ahead for Da Silva Botello, who tries to run it down against Ginocchi. They get tied up and it goes out for a Dixie throw in. So 40th minute of action as we approach the end of the first half. Dixie throwing it in, Chessman receiving it. Miss hit that left footed volley and that's gonna roll out for a goal kick. Both teams with opportunities to make an impact here, but so far just one attempt has found the back of either net and it came early in this match on a free kick set piece from Stella Rosa FC as their captain, Daniel Ginocchi, with a perfectly executed free kick, low hard strike that evaded the keeper. And into the back of the net to give Stella Rosa the one nothing lead. Litrenta a little slow to get up after the collision. Trying to walk off the knock as it's thrown in and Maffei controls. Maffei. Turning around from the first challenge, Maffei holding possession, plays the ball ahead, collected by Butler. Cuts in, lays off for Maffei. Plays to the near flank as Branca runs onto it. Controls, tries to get through the challenge and a good job there by Mong to take him into the corner. Branca can't come away with the ball. Dixie clear it only as far as Maffei. Touched into the middle, laid off now for Loncar. Longcar, his shot from distance initially blocked. Loose ball, and that's cleared away by Laurenti Manrique. Vidakovic steps around the first challenge. He wants to get some offense going here, but Maffei unable to get the ball back to him. Held in play. Nice job to toe the line there by Dixie as Ginocchi steps up and takes control. Branca, excellent ball ahead. Patel now with room to make a run or cross it in. He opts for the ladder and unfortunately for Stellaros FC, they lose possession on a foul committed by Butler. He's trying to say, I played him with my shoulder. Referee says, yeah, maybe, but the shoulder was into his back. You can't do that. So here in the 43rd minute of action, 
Dixie play it short from the free kick. Lorenti Manrique out wide. Ribbit, she's got room to carry. Uh, check that, that was actually Diaku who carried ahead. He had Ribic as an option up the line, but lost the ball. And now here goes Stella Rosa on the counter. Kush Patel turning on the Rockets as he wins the ball cleanly. Gets past the first defender, streaking back. He still holds it away from Ga. Excellent work there as that ball in from Mefe off the defender and easily collected by Skasilas, but... What a burst of speed from Kush Patel to make that play for Stella Rosa. We await the indication of added time from the fourth official and a reminder that today's Ontario Cup action is fueled by Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel during halftime, which will be coming up momentarily here in the Boys under 16 district final at the 2021 Ontario Cup Finals weekend. We've got two more games tomorrow and that will conclude the 2021 Ontario Cup Finals action. As in the morning, kicking off at 10 a.m. We've got a great match between, off the top of my head, I believe it is Woodbridge Strikers taking on London Alliance FC Mustangs as London Alliance winning in the girls under 13 division today. So they'll try and repeat tomorrow in the U14 girls. And then we close out the 2021 Ontario Cup action in the under 16 girls division with Ottawa Gloucester taking on Milton Magic. That match scheduled for 12.30 p.m. Overhearing the fourth official indicating that we'll have a minimum of two minutes added here in the first half of action as we whittle our way down to halftime. Litrenta played it back and now it's quickly ahead for De Silva Botello. De Silva Botello gives it away and controlled by Maffei. Maffei oversteps and a caution coming out here. Maybe referee reached into his pocket it looks like he's changed his mind as it'll just be a free kick issued for Stella Rosa as De Silva Botello getting a last chance there from the referee, getting away with just a warning. Ruiz over top the ball. Orders from the bench were a shot on target. This would be Quite the range. Ruiz steps up, delivers, and well, apparently that is within his ranges. He had plenty of leg on it. It just lacked the accuracy to hit the target. But keep an eye on that as Ruiz has 40-yard free kick potential. Mississauga Dixie trying to respond late here, maybe drawing an equalizer as Rocco Di Trenta carrying it ahead and the bench says, no, it's just a mismatch of size, but no question about it. Lawn Car reaching that arm out, and it may have been mostly shoulder, but Lawn Car definitely getting the extension and committing the foul. Chessman trying to take the free kick quickly, and he draws a caution. So, hey, heads up play there by Dixie as they start to get under the skin of their Peel region rivals, and... The caution will go to Anthony Branca for encroachment on the free kick. So heads up play by the Dixie captain, Chessman. As Dixie look for any advantage they can get here. Late stages of the first half. Branca starts to close them in again. Referee says, I just gave you a yellow, get back. Chessman, good ball to the far post. Oh, wow, how did that not get flicked on net as a Dixie player in the vicinity? I think it was Litrenta, who's actually down injured in the back of the net. And Stellarosa have a player down as well. I think the two actually collided in the goal at one point on the challenge for the ball as Litrenta, the Dixie player, who was unable to corral the ball and put it into goal, and defensively, what a play there by Matthew Welka. And Welka taking a knock for his efforts. 
as Lee Trent is gonna need to be substituted here for Dixie. But it looks like Welka will be able to walk it off and he'll stay on for Stella Rosa. Coming into the match for Dixie, Riley Walsh. As we regain the play and action with a Dixie throw in, Chessman tosses in, headed. And that'll do it for the first half of action here in the Boys U16 District 2021 Ontario Cup Final. Folks, stay tuned. Second half of action coming up next. What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you never could have predicted? Will it be frightening or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night? or the reason you get up in the morning. Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you as you write your tomorrow. And we will protect you when you get there. Because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift. And we want you to be ready for it. The C license course is the first step into the Canada Soccer Coaching License stream. This course will take you towards all of the Canada Soccer Coach licenses. You will learn the role of the coach, how to plan a session safely, use coaching methodology to provide feedback to players and improve their decision making. Entry to this course requires a Learn to Train or Soccer for Life. This is a major step for coaches to help their players develop to higher levels of the game in Canada. The OPBL is a pathway for players to be able to excel in a standard-based league. It's player-centered and we feel that this is the best approach to help develop players to, for opportunities at the next level. Playing in the OPBL league has helped me into the, like shaped me into the player I am today because of how high, like how high the intensity is during everything. So every game, every practice, you have to bring 100% to everything that you do, which really helps for uh, going to university because you want to get a starting position. You want to start on the field, play the whole game, so no matter what you do, bring 100%. The opportunities for OPDL athletes can vary. When they move forward from the OPDL, there are many opportunities, such as our provincial program in League One Ontario, where our best athletes can graduate to, or national team programs. You have professional soccer, such as the likes as Toronto FC and their academy program, the new Canadian Premier League, and for the student athlete, there's also Canadian college, youth sports in Canada, and NCAA opportunities in the US. Cherry Shield, like that's a really big thing. The bus teams come together and it gets broadcasted. So that was like a really big part because all the universities that were interested in me watched it and I got lots of offers after that. The OPDL is preparing me by putting me on a pathway to building me up to the provincial team, pushing me towards Toronto FC and potentially the national team. OPDL players become exposed to university opportunities through several programs. We have OPDL on campus. Uh, players can also be scouted through the OPDL scouting weekends. Provincial teams is a great opportunity as well through the projects and competition versus Quebec. University coaches will come and scout the players at these events, as well as national staff and pro academy. So there's lots of opportunities for OPDL players to be uh, scouted at the uh, at the collegiate level. I just think the OPDL has great exposure um, because the quality is so high of the coaches and players. It always entices like university coaches to come out and watch us or national team coaches to come out and watch us. And so I just believe the OPDL has provided the environment for coaches to want to come watch us. Female athletes have a lot of great options playing in the OPDL. It's the segue for them to move forward into a national youth teams program. And they would first do that by starting off by trying to make it within the provincial teams program. If they're successful that way, players will be brought into the Ontario Super Centre in, in Markham, where they'll train on a full-time basis and then be known as being our national youth team players from this province that possibly could play into a national excel environment. Male players in the OPDL have similar options as the female. 
The process usually starts from an OPDL moving to a provincial environment to possibly be scouted by the likes of the TFC Academy at the pro environment or the national teams youth team program. There are opportunities for these athletes. I'm looking forward to becoming a pro and joining TFC is a uh, step towards going to that. It tries to put you in a more professional environment. Like the competition level is really what pushed me to be who I am now. I believe the OPDL has given me like a good opportunity to play among the best players, be exposed to the best coaches and have just a great training environment. And I just think in comparison to other leagues, the OPDL has just been providing me with the best environment to be able to get me where I am today. The Active Start course is for anyone involved in soccer who wants to better support a child ages three and four years old. Those taking the course will learn how to engage children through soccer with age appropriate fun and safe soccer activities. The aim of these soccer activities is to become familiar with a soccer ball while being in a child-friendly environment and connecting with a significant adult in their life. Come be a part of helping kids fall in love with the game. The Learn to Train course is for people who want to take the first step towards becoming a trained coach in Ontario. This is one of the courses that will teach you training activities in small-sided games for U9 and U12 girls and U10 and U12 boys. Coaches who successfully complete Learn to Train along with other required courses of Make Ethical Decisions, Respect in Sport and Making Headway will be qualified to train at the recreational and development level. This is the start for any coach to understanding all areas of long-term player development. The Soccer Fitness Coach Diploma is designed to help all coaches understand how to better develop their players physically. Learning about periodization, training load, work to rest ratios, as well as understanding the physiology behind developing well-balanced players will not only help them play better, but gives players a much better chance of playing soccer for life. Entry to this course requires learn to train or soccer for life or an academic degree in kinesiology or physiology. If you're a soccer coach or even a fitness coach, join us in learning how to create fitter, faster and stronger players. The Goalkeeper Coach Diploma provides you with essential skills required to coach goalkeepers. You will learn to coach the major techniques that goalkeepers need to be successful, design game-like activities, and have more confidence in helping your goalkeeper become a better version of themselves. This is the first step into becoming a specialized coach of goalkeepers. Video 10, Analytical Activity, Creating Space. This video will demonstrate the importance of an analytical activity and how to create one based on the area of the field you are working within. Okay boys, so we're gonna look at an analytical activity here. We're gonna look at creating space. So the ball's gonna start with our neutral player. So we have two neutral players on either end. Neutral player is gonna play in to a green player to receive the ball to start with and freeze. The green players are now gonna look to either combine together, so could you play him the ball, okay? And then we're looking to score by getting the ball to our neutral player. Once the ball's gone into that neutral player, greens are still in possession. Can you get the ball, greens? And freeze. If the orange win the ball, so you play the ball to there, okay, they've won it. Now orange are in possession, play to a neutral player, and now we'll start again. So orange are now in possession, to score a point, can you receive the ball, combined, can you get it to the neutral, and freeze. If the ball goes out of the field, let's grab a ball that's around the area, grab the closest ball, and we'll start the game with a passing. Ball to me. Any questions? Neutral play starts with a ball. You can play to the team of your choice. Play. In this analytical activity, we will be all right, soccer fans, welcome back into the Ontario Soccer Center Stadium as we get you set for the second half of action and the final 45 minutes of the day here at the 2021 Ontario Cup Finals. 
45 minutes remaining here in this match, and unless we are tied, in which case we would head straight to penalties. That'll be all the action we get here this evening. A Stella Rosa FC with a one nothing lead to start the second half of action. And we kick off this boys under 16 district final with a big thank you to the Ontario soccer partner, Soccer Express, for their first class support. As Canada's premier soccer apparel and equipment dealer, Soccer Express has everything needed to take your game to the next level. Visit SoccerX.com to check out the latest gear from Adidas, Nike, Puma, Admiral, and more. And we're underway here in the second half of action in the boys' district under 16 2021 Ontario Cup Final and Dixie trailing one nothing, but they start the second half with a burst of energy as Ethan Diaku tried to dribble through a wall of red and white defensive challenges and predictably he lost the ball, but now Stella Rosa trying to work up the near flank and the strong defensive work by Laurenti Manrique clears the ball out. Da Silva Batello, he tried to feed one forward for the man making the run as Mong was there, but he was unable to uh, control it cleanly. Now Diaku, once again leading the charge for Dixie, but met by the slide tackle of Alexa. Stella Rosa taking control through the midfield as Maffei. Now Giannocchi. Long clearance, and that'll go all the way out for a Dixie goal kick. Let's go Silas, plays short from the goal kick as Ga under pressure, gives it away. Let's see if Stella Rosa can capitalize. Oh, referee waves the challenge for a penalty away. Patel, the player who took the ball away from Ga and then found himself in the one-on-one -on -one encounter and the Stella Rosa FC coaching staff can't believe that there was no penalty issued for the tackle against Patel. But referee was in a good position to spot that as he was only a few yards away and had a clear line of vision on the play. Maffei, he feeds ahead. Butler oversteps it. Oh, what a step over Butler! The right-footed strike, he mishits it. Dixie can't get the initial clearance, and then Laurenti Manrique knocks it out across half as Ginocchi has to hustle back, and he does well to knock it out for the Dixie throw. They take the throw in quickly as... Mong tries to work the far flank, once again knocked out as Labile takes the toss now for Dixie. Chessman, left footed volley into the box. Ruiz gets a foot to it and the keeper Obratov tries to keep it in play but it's out for a corner kick. So we'll see if Dixie can draw even as Sebastian Labile gets set to take the corner kick. As we've played almost five minutes into the second half of action. Right footed in, Swinger headed on by a Stella Rosa defender and now controlled by Ruiz who under pressure just knocks it out for a Dixie throw in. Da Silva Batello tosses in. Diaku does well to evade the first challenge. And once again, knocked out for a Dixie throw. Diaku. Controlled by Brown. His cross to the top of the penalty area. Chessman tees up the left footed strike. But by the time he settled down the bouncing ball, he was closed down and the shot was blocked. And now here goes Stella Rosa after that missed tackle. A cross attempt in appeals from the fans for a free kick as making the attempt for Stella Rosa. I believe 
Well, no, Butler was the near side player. It may have been Ruiz who stepped all the way up. Check that, it was Patel, and Patel once again presenting an option. Butler feeds it over to Patel, but that time the pass intercepted. Brown. Back to Lorenti Menrique. Tayshawn Brown. Switching it over as it's controlled by Gaw. Gaw touching out wide for Chessman. The Dixie captain. Quick one, two, but it's red and knocked out, and it'll end up being a Dixie throw at the half. Quickly tossed in as Mong tries to take possession. Nothing doing. Dixie able to hold it. Chessman sidesteps the initial challenge but loses it. And now here goes Patel carrying the ball ahead. Dragged back. He actually pulls it back to open up some space as it's left there on the dummy. Butler in position to try get it, but Sucre never could feed him the ball. And now here goes Dixie as the Silva Batello running onto it and he earns a throw in for his team. From the throw initially headed away by Dixie as putting his foot through the ball was Mong. Nice work by Dixie to hold possession here. Chessman, his left footed cross finds Mong as he was tracking to the face of goal but Never could get a touch on the ball and it's out for a goal kick. Obratov followed the play well. Looked like he would have been in position to potentially make a save had Mong got a touch to it. 52nd minute of action and now we've got the moon shining bright behind us. We had the bright sunshine all day. Don't quite get the same warmth from the moon, unfortunately. Much chillier temperatures from when we first kicked off, but still a brilliantly beautiful night here in Vaughan. A picturesque sunset earlier and still the remnants of it off in the distance. As Dixie trying to work the far flank, but nice job by Stella Rosa as Vitakovic there defensively knocking it out for the throw. Dixie take the throw, flicked on. Mong running towards it, but Ginocchi hammers it with his right foot and into the Stella Rosa cheering section. So another Dixie throw in as Chessman plays in. Overstepping the ball initially was Ribich. Dixie have it with Gaw. Pass picked off by Branca as it's controlled here. Butler trying some fancy footwork to get around the trio of Dixie defenders, but the ball knocked away. Now Patel sent on a run, but even for his amount of speed, he can't catch that long ball. And it's knocked out for a goal kick. Stella Rosa getting set to make a substitution as Welka will come back into the match. But they'll have to wait for the next opportunity to make the change as Gaw plays it ahead. Dixie trying to work the far touchline with Comiso. The ball initially knocked loose. Nice step up and almost able to hold it in after the touch from Gaw. Along the far flank was Chessman. Thrown from Stella Rosa. Bit of confusion there, and it's signaled as a Dixie throw. Stella Rosa maintaining a 1-0 lead as they scored very early in the match. Third, fourth minute of play on a free kick, and well, they've done well to maintain ever since as that shot attempt from distance goes over top the fence and into the darkness of the pitch behind us as we'll have a goal kick coming up here for Dixie. Sko Silas plays short from the goal kick as it's picked up by Gaw. Chessman. 
That one goes off of Bronca and out for a Dixie throw in. Dixie looking to make a substitution. They'll have to wait. As the ball knocked out again for a Dixie throw in, now we'll get the change. Dion Vogli will come into this match. As it looks like Comiso will head out. Confusion over to which side he should exit the pitch on. Referee trying to tell him, go out the far side. And finally, Labile will step off the pitch and the substitution complete, completed as Vogli comes into play. 56th minute. A battle here at the 2021 Ontario Cup under 16 boys district final match. Two teams from Mississauga going head to head as Butler's ball intended for Patel picked off a good ball challenge there, but Dixie come away with it as Mississauga Dixie trailing one nothing to Stella Rosa FC. Tayshawn Brown all alone in the middle of the pitch, hands up saying, get me the ball but they continue to work up the far flank. Controlled through the middle with Maffei. Butler checks back to take possession. Can't get around Laurenti Manrique, who played it for Ribic. And now Dixie working up the far sideline once again. This time Vogli, his first touch here in the match and the ball to send Mong on the run. Sees Janoki hammer it out of play for a throw in. Well, Dixie, Mississauga Dixie, continue to chip away, and Stella Rosa FC haven't really created too much offense since the opening goal. Let's see if they can capitalize now because it feels like they need an insurance marker as Dixie continue just to chip and claw and. If they continue to work the way they are, you would think they'll get rewarded for their efforts, but right now Stella Rosa FC just taking their time trying to secure victory with a 1-0 scoreline. Still lots of match time left. We're only in the 58th minute of action as it's controlled by Ruiz. No one there in red and white. It's out for a Dixie throw. An opportunity for us to remind you that new this year, the Dairy Farmers of Ontario, representing Ontario's 3,400 dairy for, uh, producers and their families, has joined Ontario Soccer as a community partner and the exclusive title partner of the Milk Up Ontario Soccer Future Leaders Program. This program is based on three pillars of celebration, recognition, and development to support Ontario soccer youth leaders. Keep your eyes on OntarioSoccer.net where the deserving 2021 Milk Up Future leaders will be announced soon. Maffei fights through the challenge, plays it back to his keeper, Obratov. Closed down by Mong. We saw some dramatics earlier today when keepers mishandled the ball. It played a big factor in the boys' U16 Ontario Cup final where Dero TFC Oshawa unable to hold an early one Nothing lead, eventually losing that match three to one to the Oakville Blue Devils as Oakville capitalizing on a miscue by the Dero TFC keeper, capitalizing from a penalty kick and then a brilliant strike from distance for the third goal. We'll see if Dixie can channel some of that resolve as Dixie gets set for the corner kick. Good ball delivered in. A scramble for possession. Brown tries to get a foot to it. Still loose. Ball ricocheting around. Comiso lets one fly, but that one never threatens as it sails high over top the bar. So Obratov will prepare to take the goal kick as the Stella Rosa bench trying to Urge the players on the pitch just to calm things down. 
And the keeper, Obratov, will get set to play this long from the goal kick. Bit of a breeze blowing towards the Dixie goal, but the ball here controlled by Stella Rosa. Dixie trying to hustle it back. Nice attempt to win it through the challenge from Walsh, but now it's controlled by the Dixie back line. The keeper, Skosilas, playing out to Gauss. Skosilas under pressure from Patel, but he gets it right back to Gauss. Gauss touching over for Chessman. Ribic with a man on his back, does well to continue forward with possession. Ribic gets hammered. Advantage not resolved and a free kick and a caution will come from that as the free kick will have to be taken way back inside the Dixie half. The advantage never really materialized and the caution shown to Ethan Butler in the 61st minute. So Butler finds himself in the book for that hard challenge. And then a push off the ball as Ribic, the man who was fouled, getting a little bit frustrated on the physical nature of the defensive checks. But Dixie trying to get under the skin of Stella Rosa and they continue with the ball up the flank as Diaku knocks it out and earns himself a throw in. Referee tells the Dixie player, Mong, he needs to check that. Diaku, he needs to head further back for the throw. Now he tosses in for Comiso. Diaku, back to check that. That's De Silva Botello. Does well to win that battle. Diaku trying to split the D, taking them head on, carrying the ball into the penalty area. One Dixie player against three Stella defenders and. A good effort by Diaku, but the defenders win that exchange. There's a cross into the area. Long car gets a foot to it, and then the clearance coming from Maffei. Go. Ga plays it to Laurenti Manrique. Diaku, back to Laurenti Manrique. Time and space in front of him. He looks to send a long ball up the pitch, and... It's received by Mong. He tries to play out wide, but picked off, and then Stella can't quite hold possession on that long ball attempt. The team's just starting to hit it back and forth a little bit. Fatigue may be starting to become a factor here. Camiso. They've got Brown wide open in the middle of the pitch, but they continue to try maneuver in tight quarters as Vogli... All he can do is win his team a throw in. Dixie will make a substitution here as. Nope, they opt to hold off for the time being. The ball thrown in and a corner kick to come now for Dixie off that defensive miscue from Stella. So we're approaching the final 25 minutes of match play. Stella Rosa holding a tenuous 1-0 lead. Defending this Dixie corner kick. Ball delivered, top of the penalty area. Branca gets ahead to it. Long car plays it straight up. A couple of Stella players crashing into each other as Mong tries to volley. He plays ahead for Da Silva Botello. He can't corral into a clean shooting lane and then the ball knocked out for a Dixie throw in. And still no substitution. From the throw, long car. That one knocked off of Comiso. Ginocchi has to play it as he was pressured. Dixie centering it. Oh no, what a missed opportunity. That's what they had been working for all match. De Silva Batello all alone in front of the net. Just the striker and the keeper and De Silva Patello puts it over top the bar. 
Less than six yards out, he has to have a better quality touch. He has to put that one on target. That may have been the lone opportunity to equalize. We'll see if Dixie can generate another quality chance like that one that just won a rise. Jimmy Hewn checks into this game. And for Stella, Bokian comes back into the match as he'll replace Sukra. Also coming out was Vitakovic, and in his place comes Matthew Welka. Welka making that great defensive clearance towards the end of the first half. His block, which probably saved a goal as Dixie were threatening towards the end of the final 45. And here in the second 45, they continue to press, but this time Loncar comes up with possession only to have it stripped away by Diaku. He's provided some good energy here in the second half for Dixie as Diaku makes the pass over to Camiso. He misplays it, Loncar takes possession. Camiso pulls up with a bit of a knock. But he's back to his feet, and now Ga plays the ball ahead, as staying onside along the far flank. Nice job there by Abo Atia Fauzi. Dixie holding the ball through midfield. Diaku. As Laurenti Manrique playing the ball. Up into the attacking third, the captain Giannocchi steps up. He took a hard knock for his efforts. Dixie continue to press on the ball. Diaku crosses in, no one able to get a foot on it. Giannocchi still stays down, Stellarosa not playing the ball out. As now they finally knock it to the far line. Patel will hustle after it, he can't keep it in. And now with Giannocchi still down, the referee will Halt play and check on the injured defender for Stella Rosa. Dixie earned the throw-in, and they'll get a chance to make a substitution here as Rocco Di Trenta comes back into the match, and it looks like he'll replace Evan Ribic. Stella Rosa getting set to make a change of their own as it looks like Justin Budic will come back into this match. I don't think it was Giannocchi who came off. No, he's still out there, so I didn't quite see who came off for Stella Rosa, but play continuing on here as it's controlled by the Dixie keeper, Skasilas. He plays out to Laurenti Menrique. As we are into the 69th minute of play, Dixie still trailing 1-0. On a goal inside the opening five minutes from a free kick by Stella Rosa, they've maintained that one goal advantage this whole match. As Ga heads it back to his keeper, Skosilas, who in turn quickly throws it out to the captain, Chessman. Dixie have got to show a different level of urgency here as time starting to tick away. Approaching the final 20 minutes of match play. Budik, long car, tries to feed ahead for Budik, but that's picked off by Diaku. Hewn sidesteps the challenge there from Butler and plays it back to his keeper. Skosilas out for Laurenti Manrique. As his ball makes its way ahead for Mong. Mong controls, plays a left-footed ball up the pitch, but not one that could have ever been caught by Vogli, and now it's 
covered by the keeper, Obratov. As the Stella keeper taking his time, and now he gets a good drop kick out across half. Headed up by Chessman. Controlled by Welka as he hammers that one, but it goes out of play for a Dixie throw. Well, a reminder that Sports Engine is the official technology partner of Ontario Soccer and the leading provider of sport relationship management software for youth and amateur sports. Check out sportsengine.com backslash solutions to see how they can help keep your club running in stride on and off the pitch this season. Ball knocked out as they call for the replacement ball, but a substitution to come for Dixie. As Riley Walsh gets set to come into this match and Dixie will have the throw in deep in the attacking third as Walsh enters into play, and Vogli comes out of the match. Long throw in, headed away. Up the line, Butler racing after it, gets to it first for Stella Rosa. Ethan Butler, he gets pulled back, nothing at all from the referee's vantage point. Butler throws his hands up in frustration, but his coaching staff urges him to keep a cool head. Foul committed there on the challenge as Lee Trenta took a boot for his trouble. And a free kick for Dixie. Jimmy Hewn standing over top of the ball for Dixie. The lone man there to take the free kick. One man defensively over top the ball. This is a far range attempt. Hewn sends it to the far post and no one there in black and blue to get a foot to it and with the ball not going on target, Obertov shields it for the goal kick. Luka Obertov adjusts his shin pads and now gets set to take the goal kick. Challenging through the air is Comiso, and now he wins the ball for Dixie, but only for a moment. As a free kick called there, Bokian getting the whistle for Stella Rosa. As the team in the red and white striped kits slow things down and take their time with this free kick. Piling players into the attacking third, but they opt to play it short as Giannocchi controls, plays it back to the men, and then Giannocchi sends it up the pitch, giving possession away to Chessman as he and Welka playing a bit of back and forth, and now it's a throw in for Stella Rosa. Welka wanting to take it. Finally, his teammate Vitakovic leaves the ball for him. Long throw from Welka. Butler running onto it, gets a touch to it, tries to hold it in play, but wow, it sits there and yeah, eventually it looked like from here it was out. And finally the AR2 puts up his flag to call the goal kick. 74th minute of action. A reminder that we're back here tomorrow morning for the last two 2021 Ontario Cup final matches as we get the action underway tomorrow at 10 a.m with the girls under 14 final pitting Woodbridge against London and then wrapping up the 2021 Ontario Cup final championship matches here with the under 16 girls final at 12.30 p.m. between Ottawa Gloucester and Milton Magic. But we could still have more drama in this one as a free kick to come now for Dixie. Mong on the ball getting set to take this set piece. Again, a bit far out. This could be an attempt on target. A three-man wall sets up defensively to try block. But Dixie also putting 
Five players along the far post and one on the near to potentially receive a cross. Mong plays in. He looks for a cross to the far post. The ball dips and drops out of play and a goal kick here for Stella Rosa. So Dixie just lacking that clinical finishing despite creating a number of opportunities. And interesting looks, they haven't truly threatened Obratov too much in goal. He's had to come off his line a couple of times, he's maybe made the odd save or two, but a relatively easy night of work for Obratov in goal for Stella Rosa FC. Dixie trying to make a substitution here. As Labile will get set to come into the match. <coughs> and Mong will be the player substituted out. So we'll see if Dixie can get a spark here from the substitute in the final 15 minutes. Comiso heads on. Easily cleared away by Welka. Diaku running on to it. Laurenti Manrique. Diaku, Hyun, turns, looks to take the space, but instead pulls back for Laurenti Manrique, who in turn switches over to Ga. Chessman, the Dixie captain, feeds the ball ahead, working the touchline, drawing it back in as it's controlled by Comiso. Check that, Litrenta. He loses possession, and now it's Loncar taking it ahead. Budic on the back. He throws the arms out, and an easy foul call there for the official, as Diaku thought about taking it quick, but now he plays it short to Ga. Laurenti Manrique over to Ga. Dixie starting to inch their way up the field and they're putting everyone in front of the ball. They're putting the full court press on right now as they know they've got to do something to equalize here. Otherwise Stella Rosa will be crowned the 2021 Ontario Cup champions in the boys under 16 district division. But they are still 14 plus minutes away from that being the case. Dixie winning a throw in at half. Quickly tossed in as Walsh. Nice one, two is along the far touchline. They try work it and a foul called here and a caution shown as I believe that's Bokian heading into the book. And another caution shown to Stella Rosa. So a free kick to come here for Dixie in the 78th minute of play. Patel getting set to come back into the match here for Stella Rosa. But first they'll have to defend this Dixie free kick. Chessman, left footed delivery into the box. Headed away, straight up in the air a second time and then a High foot, a dangerous kick, and it'll be a free kick for Stella Rosa after the challenge coming in from Labile and a bit of a scramble in front of goal. The initial header by Welka. But now it'll be Ruiz to take the free kick for Stella Rosa. Ruiz clears it across half. It's headed by Chessman, but that'll travel out for a Stella Rosa throw in. Unable to get the substitution that time. They have the ball with Welka. Giannocchi, he plays it forward. And that's out for a Dixie throw. Eightieth minute of play. Final ten minutes plus any added time. Dixie need to step it up here 
They gotta find a way to break down this tough defensive back line from Stella Rosa. As Stella Rosa win a free kick. Matthew Welka on the ball. Stella Rosa, after taking the lead early in this match, they have really been in control all game long, although Dixie has continued to press here in the second half, and they've given Stella Rosa a few tense moments, but ultimately, Stella Rosa continued to control the pace and possession in this match, and now we'll get the substitution as Kush Patel gets set to come back into play. And tracking over for the substitution is Justin Budik. So Patel back into the match and we saw his speed create a number of threatening opportunities for Stella Rosa in the first half. And now he'll come into a left wing attacking position. We'll get a substitution here from Dixie from the goal kick. As Nicholas Sanin gets set to come in. And he'll replace Marco Comiso. So Sanin trying to make a impact in a positive manner for Dixie. As he takes up a midfield position. Chessman. Running into a Stella player and it's knocked out for a Dixie throw. Chessman takes quickly, headed on, but a battle for possession, and now it's held by Sanin. Walsh playing that one forward. Da Silva Batello working the left flank, but it's knocked out for a Dixie throw. Da Silva Batello tossing in. Chessman controlling from his chest, volleys ahead. That one off the defender and back to the keeper, Obratov, who Initially, he wasn't sure if he could grab it, and then maybe even taking a second or two more, finally scoops it up due to the pressure of Lutrenta. Obratov, good, strong boot. Trying to track back for it was Butler, but he couldn't gain possession. Laurenti Manrique. Diaku. Good ball over to Sanin. Litrenta gets a foot to it. It wasn't intended for him, but Diaku able to hold possession. Sanin cuts into the middle with that ball. Gaw over to Chessman. 83rd minute. Chessman left-footed attempt from distance. Obratov right there at the post and ensured that one went wide. Stella Rosa taking every second they can before they have to put the ball back into play as Obratov catching his breath and now tees up the right-footed boot from the goal kick. Bouncing as Lonkar comes up with possession. Touching it out wide. Branca, Lonkar playing it back as Welka controls. He's under pressure, does well to spin off the challenge and then plays for Lonkar. Stella Rosa can't hold it along the far touchline. Tough break there for Branca. And now a change coming here for Dixie. Mong comes back into the game. As heading off along the far touchline is the captain, Chessman. So they take a defender out and bring an attacker on. And Dixie know that they're down to their last few moments of this match in terms of drawing an equalizer. 84th minute of action. Oh, a turnover! Butler and all alone! Oh no, he mishandles it! Oh my goodness, if Stella Rosa give up an equalizer, Butler is gonna have nightmares over that missed breakaway chance. He fumbled the ball at his feet and that bit of hesitation Gave the keeper a chance to steal it, but now Longcar gets it back, and Stella Rosa can maybe double up, but no, there, it's snuffed out. Good defensive block by Gaw. 
Dixie have got to gain some composure after those last two miscues. Full credit to Jersey Skosalas, who came off his line and took the ball away from Butler. And he may have to do the same here as Butler gets a knock to it. It's trickling towards the line, but Skosalas able to take it for Dixie and he bowls it out quickly. As Diaku playing ahead. Labile, Dilaku, Diaku tries to feed it over, but that one intercepted and cleared up the pitch. 85th minute as Butler takes it for Stellarosa. His coaches tell him, take it towards the corner and hold it. Nice job by Butler to split the Ds into the penalty area. Butler, what a shot. Oh, that one just rolls wide. A defender got his foot in there as the referee shows a corner kick. And Stellarosa trying to feed off the energy from the crowd. Ethan Butler now takes a knee and he'll need a substitution after a tremendous individual effort. Pulling up with a bit of a cramp in his leg. Butler signaling he wanted a change. Referee saying, let's go make the change. And for Stella Rosa, they will replace Butler with Budik. Wow, great individual effort there in the last few moments from Ethan Butler as he had that one-on-one -on -one chance with the keeper, Skosilis. And then the subsequent chance there as he dribbled his way through and if not for a last second ditch defensive block, Butler would have certainly found the back of the net. Instead, the ball deflected out for a corner kick and here goes the corner for Stella Rosa as trotting over to take it will be Milan Longcar. 87th minute of action. As we'll be sure to have some added time, but here comes the corner from Longcar. Good ball, knocked loose. High foot comes up and that'll draw a referee's whistle and a free kick for Dixie. And a chance to remind us all at home as a caution issued there to the captain Giannocchi for that bit of gamesmanship. Soon another deserving team will engrave their name into Ontario Cup history and receive their medals and hoist the beautiful Ontario Cup trophy created by Nothers, the award store. For more than 50 years, Nothers, the award store, has been a leading supplier of awards and recognition products across Ontario, offering complete assistance from program concept planning all the way to product delivery. See how they can help your organization at Nothers.com. Referee signals the throw in for Stella Rosa as we are into the 88th minute of play. 1 0 the lead here for Stella Rosa in the boys under 16 district 2021 Ontario Cup finals. The lone goal coming back in the opening moments of this match, back in the opening five minutes when. Daniel Ginocchi, who recently went into the referee's notebook with the caution, struck from the free kick, but now maybe a chance for Dixie. Nothing doing as De Silva Botello closed down immediately, and Longcar plays the ball ahead, but Gaw takes possession now for Dixie. His ball picked off, quickly hammered up the field by Alexa. Longcar takes it, tries to feed the pass to Patel, it's picked off. Good long ball, but stepping up is Janocki to make the interception. Labile, his pass picked off. End-to-end -end action here as Longcar taking possession at midfield. 89th minute of play. Vokian, Longcar slowing it down. Plays it back to Welka. Welka playing it forward. Good ball for Vokian. Touches out wide. Running ahead is Budik. He tries to hold possession. Welka, left-footed hammer, and that'll go straight to the Dixie keeper. Skosilis, who quickly bowls it out, and we're now into the final minute of action. We await to see the amount of added time from the fourth official, but there's nothing left here for Dixie. They have got to throw it all forward at this point, and now they try to with Diaku. He streaks up the flank, and it's knocked out for a Dixie throw-in. Headed away, Labile takes possession. Tries to cut into the middle, left-footed 
service. That one knocked out of play and a throw in here to come for Dixie. 90th minute. Lorenti Manrique. Six minutes minimum to be added here as indicated by the fourth official. We'll get the actual announcement in just a moment, but he clearly indicated to the Dixie bench a minimum of six minutes of added time. So there could still be an opportunity to come for Dixie. But for now, it's Loncar carrying the ball ahead. Loncar under pressure, and he tries to draw a foul. Referee says it's simulation, and it'll be a free kick for Dixie. Laurenti Manrique over top the ball for the free kick. Right footed service, but that's headed away and Stella Rosa have possession with Kush Patel. He evades the sliding challenge of Diaku. Patel taking it to the corner and he'll try take the clock down here as Laurenti Manrique on him defensively. Patel just holding the ball in the corner, staying in, no, now it's knocked out and We'll get a throw in here, or is it gonna be a free kick? It will be a Stella Rosa throw in, so they'll make the substitution. Uh, it's good to see Ethan Butler checking back into this match after having to exit not too long ago with that bit of a knock, but Butler gets set to come back into play here as he'll replace Budik. Stella Rosa throw in. They play short and they want to hold in the corner. But an offside there called against Alexa. And a free kick to come now for Dixie. Dixie wastes that free kick and it's out for a Stella throw. Budik will stay up as Stella will try and make substitutions when they can to slow things down and prevent any momentum Dixie may be building. As Labile comes up with the ball, he's checked closely by Alexa who comes away with it. Patel sliding challenge from behind and that draws a caution as Nicholas Sanin into the referee's notebook. But Stella Rosa will happily take that Free kick as they slow things down to a snail's pace. Daniel Alexa over top the ball. As he gets set to take the free kick, Stella putting a few players towards the penalty area, but not wanting to make a mistake that gets them caught in a counter, they'll pull a few back as well. Played short from the free kick, Alexa playing for Maffei, and that's knocked out for Estella Corner. And as predicted, a substitution, and now this is a little bit of gamesmanship here, as Budic being taken out for Butler, and you have to hope that really it's nothing more than Butler realizing he actually couldn't go. But if they continue to swap these two in and out, which it looks like they're gonna continue to do that, I mean, that's just a little bit of gamesmanship there. We'll keep an eye on that as Butler now heads to the bench. Stella trying to hold the ball in the corner. Dixie wrestling to pull it away, but committing a foul is Litrenta, and it'll be a free kick for Stella. And once again, they'll look to hold possession tight to the corner, and they play it short. Alexa to Maffei, and he'll just hold it in the corner, but that time he fumbles possession, and it's out for a Dixie throw. Now Dixie will get set to make a substitution. As coming into the match will be Evan Ribic. So maybe he can provide a bit of energy and spark off the bench here in the waning moments of added time as Labile comes out of the match. Ball played ahead. As Litrenta had the initial control but couldn't maintain possession. Kush Patel playing the ball over intended for Budik, but that's cleared away, and now Dixie tried to build up with Mong. He works the far touchline, cuts back into the middle. This could be a promising run, playing the ball ahead for Litrenta. One man to beat in the captain in Giannocchi, and Litrenta, the undersized Litrenta, commits the foul, and now Giannocchi rolling around to take a little more time 
and try to secure victory here for Stella. He scored the lone goal of this match in the opening five minutes, and he's put in a workman's effort on that back line for Stella Rosa, the captain, Daniel Ginocchi, and being helped back to his feet here by his teammates. The referee calling the foul against Litrenta, and it'll be a free kick for Stella Rosa. Referee checks his watch. There can't be too much more time in the added minimum six minutes here in the under 16 boys. 2021 Ontario Cup, it's the district division finals. Lee Trento with a man on his back. That'll be a free kick for Dixie. Sanin trying to take quickly. Hewn plays short for Diaku. Diaku trying to work the near flank. That one a poorly timed challenge from Diaku and he'll find himself receiving a yellow card for that challenge. And a free kick to come here for Stella Rosa as Alexa receiving the knock. I've been very tempted all match to make a hey Alexa joke, but I'm gonna refrain from it. As Alexa gets set to take the free kick for Stella Rosa FC. Nice job by Diaku to get a foot to it. Turn by Sanin, he's trying to make the march up the pitch now. Into the middle, Hune controls, playing it out wide. As Walsh making the touch for Mang. Mang gets around the first man, tries to control. It's knocked out for a Dixie throw. They play it in quickly. Walsh heading it there as well because he knocks it out for another throw. Referee checks his watch. You have to think that this is going to be the last attacking sequence for Dixie. Walsh throws in. Litrenta picks it up from the throw. Loses possession. Stella Rosa earned the throw in. This could be it. That's it. The referee blows his whistle. And you're under 16 boys district. Ontario Cup champions in 2021 are Stella Rosa FC. Well, we started the day celebrating with flares burning and we'll end with flares burning in the night sky. Stella Rosa FC picking up the 1-0 victory in the boys under 16 District Ontario Cup Finals. And they are your champions for 2021. Thank you again to our proud partners for today's event. Our broadcast partners, Hub International Insurance Brokers, our premier partners, Toronto FC, our community partners, the Dairy Farmers of Ontario, as well as Respect in Sport, Soccer X, Sports Engine, Gatorade, and Nothers, the award store. Folks, thank you for tuning in all day long. Stella Rosa FC, your champions in the 2021 Boys U16 District Ontario Cup Finals. And we will wrap up Ontario Cup Finals weekend tomorrow as we're back in action live at 10 a.m. Folks, we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in.